and more hope for you. I have told you a few times now about the search for a cure, a treatment, a vaccine, and there do seem to be some promising signs. Nothing certain, nothing certain, but still promising. Now, a lot of the buzz is about an anti-malarial drug already approved and used. It's called chloroquine, or it's uh, derivative hydroxychloroquine. Now, sometimes it's used in combination with another drug for even more effectiveness. And this has been researched in Australia, South Korea, China, Japan, elsewhere. Trials have started in the United States, in New York. And a limited one in France already suggests that 75% of the few patients studied had no symptoms after five days. Now, another survey is about to start in Melbourne. I spoke earlier to Professor Doug Hilton of the Walter and Eliza Hall Institute. Professor Doug Hilton, thank you so much indeed for joining me. Uh, tell me, uh, how did you come across this particular drug? Why did you think this one had some potential for you? So that's really interesting. When a new disease emerges, the quickest way we can find a medicine that might treat it is to look at all of those medicines that have been approved for other diseases. And that's really what the world's research community has been doing. And hydroxychloroquine came out of just that type of experiment and looked very promising in terms of being able to prevent the replication of the coronavirus in a test tube. And so we thought that it was worth us having a go and seeing whether we can prevent coronavirus um, infection in our healthcare workers. And how much promise do you see in this one? Look, I think it's a really promising idea and it's one that needs to be tested properly. You can't just go from a, a smart idea that a researcher has to handing out these drugs willy-nilly across the population. That's a recipe for disaster. What we need to do is to do a proper clinical trial and ask whether the smart idea um, actually has some basis. And, and if the answer to that is yes, then we can then pr proceed with confidence and roll the medication out more widely. And this, uh, this particular drug, this uh, hydroxychloroquine, is it, if you take it, is it meant to stop you getting the virus in the first place? Or as we saw in that French very limited trial, it will actually just shorten the days, number of days in which you're sick? So what we hope in this trial, what we're testing, the hypothesis we're testing, is that it will, it will prevent infection before it starts. And wow. our experience with influenza is, I think, really informative. There's a wonderful drug, Relenza, which was developed by an amazing Australian research group led by Peter Coleman. And what we find using Relenza is if we give it to patients before, they, before they're exposed to the, the flu virus, or almost a day or two afterwards, but before the virus has really got hold, then we can almost prevent infection. Whereas if we give it later, after people have the symptoms of flu, it's much less, much less useful. And so we're trying to learn the lessons of a long experience with influenza in the approach that we want to take with coronavirus. Let's see if we can prevent people getting the virus, having the virus take hold so that they never get sick rather than just trying to reduce their length of illness. Oh, this is uh, really exciting stuff. Now, obviously, we've got to cool it a bit. We've got to see whether it actually works. This trial you're talking about, how, how are you going to proceed? Who are you going to give it to? So we're proceeding with the hospital partners around Melbourne, especially Royal Melbourne Hospital. They're, they're the first partner on board and, and a number of other hospitals around, um, around Melbourne now. The first thing we have to do is get ethics approval. But in these times of crisis, that can be done more quickly than might be the case uh, under nor normal circumstances. So we're hoping in the next week or two that we will have full ethics sign-off. And then after that, we hope within a week or two, when we have our formulation um, right for the drug and for the placebo, that we could begin recruiting, recruiting patients, um, recruiting people and their healthcare, healthy healthcare workers um, within four weeks. Um, that's a bit short, a bit long, isn't it, when people could potentially be dying? Are you hoping that that could be contracted a little? Uh, we will be going as hard as we can, but it also has to be done right. There's, mm. there's, no, there's no sense in which you shortcut the ethics. Um, the ethics of the trial have to be reviewed properly, and we have, we have speedy ways of doing that. 
but you never want to cut corners when people's lives are potentially at stake, especially our healthcare workers. Now, from what you just said, I assume that you are starting with people who are going to be most exposed and we most need to keep safe, which are healthcare workers dealing potentially or really with yep. people who've got the virus themselves. So it's our frontline workers, and I think there's two really important reasons for starting with them. You know, the first is they're going to be people that are in some ways most at risk to exposure and we want to prevent their illness or as we've seen overseas tragically with large numbers of healthcare workers, potentially very serious illness and sometimes death. So we, we obviously want to protect those workers, but if we can protect those workers, then we also protect the community because those people can stay at work and take care of our most vulnerable uh, members of the community, the elderly, the immunocompromised, who have the hardest time dealing with the coronavirus. So we think potentially it's win-win. No, that makes absolute sense, and if it does work, they're, they're, they're immune from the very start. Um, I, I hear that it was about 2,000 people you're going to start with, is that correct? That's right. It's about 2,200, just over 2,200, and half of those will get the hydroxychloroquine, and half of those will get the placebo control. And what we're looking to see is whether those who get the hydroxychloroquine have a lower rate of infection with the COVID, um, with the coronavirus, um, are less likely to get the COVID disease um, and then obviously can continue to participate at work protecting the community. Now, Doug Hilton, I don't want to get ahead of ourselves here. Uh, it is a trial. It might not work. But let's ho say it does work. How long do you think it would take to ramp this up so that it is more generally available to the population because obviously then you're talking about sourcing supplies of the chemical or its ingredients and, and that obviously might be tricky since half the world seems to be uh, trying, uh, you know, got its eye on this uh, same drug. So the good news about that is it's a drug that is very well understood so it can be synthesised pretty quickly um, and there are companies that are doing that. My sense is that, that maybe part way through the clinical trial, if the signal, the effect of the drug is very positive, then we may be able to see that early and it would be at that time that you would consider, um, consider getting additional drug for other groups. Um, at, I don't think, it, I, I certainly wouldn't be advocating stockpiling the drug based on a good idea. I'd like to see a little bit of evidence but before we went down that track, but then being able to move really quickly if it, if, it looks, if it looks positive and exciting. Are you looking perhaps in time for the next flu season? Uh, you know, the next flu season, my understanding is, and I'm not a clinician or an epidemiologist, but people start thinking about getting their flu injections normally in April, ahead of a flu season that starts in our winter months. And if we push hard, we may be getting some results for this um, maybe part way through winter. Uh, and that obviously would be very useful because I think one of the things that our, our medical doctors are worried about is the, the combination of coronavirus and influenza occurring in Australia at the same time. Without a doubt. Just finally, uh, Doug Hilton, working on a project like this, I mean, obviously you're working on stuff that hopefully saves lives in the future. Does it excite you at all to have people's lives, you could save people's lives with the work you're doing here and uh, you could rescue this country from what's absolutely a crippling economic blow at the same time. Does that excite you much? Oh, look, it's exactly why we do our work. I think one of the fabulous things about health and medical research in Australia that it's highly is it's highly collaborative. So I'm really excited to be working with people at the Doherty Institute in Melbourne, um, at the Burnett Institute, at our big hospitals, and I know of the great work that's being done on, at UQ, and we're all motivated by the same thing. I think what we want is to be able to ensure that our community gets through this crisis um, with you know, the lowest possible in impact, both on people's health and ultimately economically too. I think that's exactly what excites and motivates every health and medical researcher in Australia. Well, potentially, Doug Hilton, you've got our future in your hands. All the best to you and thank you so much for coming in. Thanks, Andrew.